welcome to Living Springs. Here are your announcements. Evening service every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Overflow youth every Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. Intercessory prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Adult Sunday School, every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Juicy's Hamburger, Men's Ministry, 8 a.m., June the 3rd. Connect with us. We're so glad to have you here. Enjoy service. everybody are y'all ready to worship Ooh, y'all ready to worship there we go okay let's stand up and worship this afternoon christ is my firm foundation the rock on which i stand when everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So I would. still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense and I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength cause I built my life on Jesus he's never So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't, oh, he won't fail, he won't, he won't fail, he won't fail. built on you I'm sacred you I'm gonna make it through rain came in blue my house was built on you I'm sacred Rain 
guess I'm gonna make it through Cause I'm standing strong on you I'm gonna make it through Cause my house is built on you Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So I will. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you let's sing holy to those of 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, as she's singing this song, would you just do exactly as that's saying? Would you just greet somebody next to you in love tonight? Amen, next to you. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time, Jesse. Yes, God, thank you for your love. Hey, Frank. How you doing, man? start to pray for the names on our board right now. Father, we just love you. We thank you for every person that this board represents, God. Every soul, Lord Jesus. Every heart. Father God, we just ask you to speak to these hearts tonight and these souls by the power of your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, as you speak to us, God, I thank you that you can speak to them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, speak to your people. Speak to your creation, God. I thank you for lost souls being saved tonight, God. I thank you for hearts being changed. I thank you for dreams, Father God, coming to life. I thank you for promises coming to pass. I thank you for the hopes and futures of every one of these people. Lord, they would know your name. They would fall in love with you, Jesus. That they would never leave you. I pray, Lord Jesus, tonight for this congregation of people. Holy Spirit, you would speak in this precious way. I thank you, Father God, for the mission of this church. Thank you for the power that comes from your spirit. It comes from each other. Thank you, Holy God. Minister to us tonight, God. Minister to us, Jesus. Minister to us, Jesus. Minister to your people, God. Jesus' name. So worthy of it all, Lord. So worthy of it all, Lord. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. Oh, from you all things. It's you. 
so grateful to be in your presence, Heavenly Father, Lord, today. Lord Jesus, we're just so grateful to come, to come and worship you, Lord, and just to exalt your name, Heavenly Father, and just give you all the honor and the praise, God, because you are worthy of it, Heavenly Father. There's no other reason but that, Heavenly Father, that you are just worthy of it all. Lord Jesus. Lord, we're just focused on you right now, Lord. And we want to do the things that you want us to do, Lord. We want to see the things that you see, Heavenly Father. Lord, break our hearts for what breaks yours, Lord. Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you so much. And we know that you have big things planned for our lives, each and every single one of us. So, Lord, we just ask that you help us go into that more, Heavenly Father. That you open our ears, Heavenly Father. We love you so much. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, how you doing? Welcome to Living Springs. Here are your announcements. Evening service every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth every Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. Intercessory Prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Adult Sunday School, every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Juicy's Hamburger, Men's Ministry, 8 a.m., June the 3rd. Connect with us. We're so glad to have you here. Enjoy service. Amen. We are glad to have you here tonight. Thank you for joining us in our midweek service. Can we give the Lord one more applause tonight? It's so good. Amen. The presence of the Lord. Thank you, Sister Jessica, for leading us into the presence of God tonight. God is faithful. Oh, man. What a week we've had. Thank you for letting my wife and my, my children and I travel a little bit as we just got back from Carolinas. It was a wonderful trip to go see a place that's so historic in so many ways and beautiful in so many ways. And uh, the journey was was quite long. We drove 2,400 miles there and back again over a span of nine days and many hotels later. Uh, we are here with many pictures and many stories to tell. Amen. I thank God for the the beautiful nation that we get to have an opportunity to live in. How about you? We just celebrated Memorial Day this past week, and to all of our veterans, thank you. Thank you for those who've served and so served so valiantly, giving their lives and giving up their families to go and take care and protect this, this great nation that we have the privilege of living in. Amen? Thank you for your service. Thank you to all of our guests. Thank you to watch those watching by Facebook Live. Take up an offering tonight if you have your offerings available. We're, we're fixing to... Do a missions trip uh, at the end of this month or this coming month in, in the end of June. June 30th, we'll be leaving here to go to El Salvador. Gloria a Dios. Amen. We're going to El Salvador. God is good. And so this is the first time that we as a church and church leadership are getting to go to another country in the last five years of ministry here in Palestine. So God is faithfully progressing us as we go. Amen. To do things that he wants us to do. And I know that God has is, is been blessing us over and above. It's kind of how you know it's Him when the door swings wide. Somebody say amen to that. Uh, we don't have to fight God. All we have to do is hear Him. Hey. And when He says go, we simply say yes. I'm praying and believing for miracles there. Would you pray and believe with us as well as our team is preparing to leave at the end of the month? 
hallelujah, for all needs being met. We still have a few resources that we need to pay for. And hotels and airfare these days, seem the price seems to be going up and up and up, no matter what country you're flying or, or traveling to. And so there are some costs that we're trying to obtain so we can go and uh, go safely. Uh, when we arrive, we're going to be doing some ministry at a couple of different locations. One's in the city of San Salvador. Uh, we'll be doing street ministry, witnessing, preaching the gospel, doing worship uh, in the middle of the squares and plazas, and then also ministry to an orphanage there uh, in that area, which I'm looking forward to. We've got some dental supplies that have been given to us, and I'm looking forward to handing out all those things and loving on those people, loving on those children, and sharing the good news of Jesus. Amen. So that's what tonight's offering is for, is that those finances would come through and full, that we could go take the gospel to another country. So, Father, I thank you tonight for this offering. May it be a blessing to you, Lord, in your kingdom, your purpose, and your will. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to do what you're asking. Lord, what an honor and privilege to serve you, Father God. What an honor and privilege to give unto these ministries. And the things that you have planned for this church is a yes and amen. I know, God, that your plans, Father God, will prosper. I thank you, Father God, you... You have set a course for us that no weapon, though it may be formed, will prosper against us because you trump them all, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you've taught us how to obey you. And I thank you for the giver tonight that's obeying as they give. Thank you for the blessing of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give tonight. If you're giving online, your instructions are on the screen. Thank you for your heart to give. As I was saying, we were able to do some traveling this week. It was a wonderful trip, and I know that if you've ever traveled out east, uh, there are some wonderful things to see and to do, and we got to experience a lot of stuff. And so thank you again for church leadership holding down the fort. Thank you for Pastor Jessica, Pastor Adam, all the staff doing what you do and doing it well. Uh, I did not have one phone call saying, hey, where are you at? So uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing when the pastor doesn't get, get trouble calls because I know we have good leadership in place that God has sent to do a good work in this house. And I am faithfully trusting God for more faithful, trustworthy leadership to come. How about you? The mission is great. The duty that we have in Christ can be long. It can be um, troublesome at times, but can, can we all say that it's worth it, amen, in Christ to do what he's asking of us. So thank you, Lord for faithful leaders such as yourselves. Praise God. And I'm going to be speaking about starting a brand new sermon series that I believe dives into where we're at as a body of believers. There are portions of where we're at in Christ where the circumstances have become sort of dire in a way that we would return back to the place of the altar of God. The altar has been abandoned for, I think, too long and for for too many years in the church, and the body of Christ has grown a little bit cold and weary, dry even at times. And God wants to bring a refreshing fire, a new wind, a new wave of His Spirit. And I believe that it's coming. But there are some things that God has to address in the, in the body of Christ as a whole before He can move in great power. There are things that are still separating us from His presence. You know, sin separates us from the will of the Father and from the presence of the Father. I believe that God is addressing those things throughout all the world right now. And so tonight I want to kind of dive into some of that, speaking on the topic of pride. Pride in the church is, is a great issue, an issue of, of sorts that's afflicted many people, many persons, many men, many women have succumbed to pride. Even more so, they've made a succumbing presence in the pride of choosing pride. 
and the choices that they've made due to the circumstances of pride. I'm titling this sermon series, Weapons of Destruction. Would you please pray with me before we dive into this tonight? Father, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you, God, for illustrating to us how you choose to engage with us. But without you, we have lim- limited things. But with you, Father God, the opportunities are limitless. I ask you tonight, Father God, to help us as we walk into this place of addressing pride and pride of life. Help us, God, to understand from your word what pride is and the results of it. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that these weapons of the enemy, though they may be formed, will not prosper against us. And I thank you, God, that this word tonight can be received and acted upon. In Jesus' name, amen. The body of Christ is under assault. If you haven't walked through affliction in your life, you haven't done much for Jesus. That's right. If you haven't walked through great trials and tribulations, there may be some things for you to discover yet in your walk with Jesus Christ. The body of Christ was never meant to have this life of luxury and comfort. The body of Christ was meant to walk through circumstances and trials of many kinds. Let there be a testimony to your faith. You don't have a testimony unless you've gone through a test. Tests come to those who are truly following the ways of the Father. Can somebody say amen to that? And if you're hearing the voice of God, he will not always lead you to places that are lined up with all the safety measures that you might want. Sometimes to follow Jesus is scary. Sometimes to walk with God can be troublesome. Sometimes to hear the voice of truth and obey can really challenge a soul. But I want to encourage you tonight that if God is for you, who can be against you? I want to remind you tonight that Scripture says, Greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. I want to tell you tonight that, amen, you have a path and a place in Christ that he will lead you to, that he will guide you to, that he will lift you up in due season, amen, so you can stand against your adversary, the devil. The devil hates it when you know things like that. He hates it even more when you trust in God, amen. Well, you're not just hearers of the word, but you're doers also. I want to encourage you tonight that God's for you. He's never against you. I want to tell you tonight that God's never left you nor forsaken you, that you would believe those words and trust those words in your own lives, that God is doing something, amen, in this world, because you simply say yes to him. He loves you more than you know. He has given everything so we can have the relationship of faith with him. And I believe tonight that this assault from the enemy of your life, amen, will not overcome you in Jesus' name. The enemy is well hidden, though, under a canopy of wool called religion and deception. The commander-in-chief of this assault is a worthy adversary who's also called the father of lies. Did you know that he's called the father of lies, this enemy of yours? And he has a very good job when he lies. In fact, that's why he's called the father of them. When he lies, he lies often. In fact, every word from this enemy's mouth is nothing but a lie. Every single thing that he speaks, he speaks into a way of existence and lies into our life. Many of us in the body of Christ are still listening to this voice. Many of us in the body, our bride of Jesus, are still being deceived. He leads an army of angels that follow his every command. His commands to destroy anything created in the image of Christ Jesus. And so far, they're doing a pretty good job. It's an all-out assault on God's people. The MO, derailing the body of Christ in its true nature and purpose. What is the true nature and purpose of the body of Christ? To follow hard after Jesus. To pick up your cross daily. Amen. And follow Jesus. They have many weapons, though. One of these of which is pride. The first, amen, of weapons he uses to overcome the great body of Christ is powerful. This weapon has overcome many, many women, keeping them in their calls, from their calls, and destroying their lives. What a deadly weapon of the enemy. Pride. You know, it's the true nature of Satan to be prideful. It was the first of offenses in the kingdom of heaven. Satan came against God himself. And what a place and a position of pride to be able to stand in the presence of Almighty God, face to face, and say, I'm better than you. That's pride defined, amen. 
that we should understand we were never meant to defy God. Pride will come into a moment with us to bring question and doubt and fear and unbelief. Pride of life will leave you abandoned and quenched of the authority of God. Pride of life will have you fall as of lightning from heaven. Pride destroys the very nature of who Christ is within us, within a church body, within the, within the promises, amen, of what God intended for us to be. We are called to do great and mighty things, but pride will strip away those things from your life. It will bring you under a place of questioning and doubt that your call may never ever be answered. But can I tell you tonight, that if you'll simply obey and listen to the voice of truth, God will teach you how to overcome your own pride. Pride is not based, amen, in Scripture as, as a place of standing and, and walking in faith. Pride is a place in Scripture that comes before a fall. Every single time that pride is chosen over the ways of the Father, it comes in a great way of, of destruction into a body of believers. I've seen many pastors fall by the wayside because of their pride. I've seen great many Christians fall to their prideful ways because they simply have chosen to do it their way and not the way of the Father. God has given us Scripture, amen, so that we can overcome these things if we'll understand Scripture and know it for its truth. There have been a moment in, uh, uh, moments of pride that have been kept for those forgiving. Pride keeps us from, 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 from our forgiveness of others. Pride keeps us in a place of unforgiveness. The question is, who have you hurt because you've not forgiven? Have you ever not turned the other cheek? Pride or pride of life, it's not from God. 1 John 2.16 says this, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. Everything that the world wants to do is consumed in this one nature, the nature of Satan himself, the Antichrist, by the pride of life. Nations of the past have fallen, amen, numerous times because of this situation. Jeremiah 48, 29 is a story I want to talk about just for a little bit tonight. Jeremiah was writing about the, the pride of Moab and the pride of her arrogance. And in Jeremiah 48, 29, it reads, We have heard of Moab's pride. How great is her arrogance of her insolence, her pride, her conceit, her haughtiness of her heart. A great nation, Moab, the modern-day Jordan, was a nation of people consumed in its pride and pride of life. It was a nation consumed in lust and idol worship. An evil Jezebel spirit had consumed its leadership. I wonder if that same spirit might be in America today. I would declare to you today that it is. And that our leadership is being tempted and tried just as this great nation of Moab was. You know, God wants to address these issues, but he has to do it. Amen. Starting with one person at a time. Hey, would you look at your neighbor and say, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. You know, it's encouraging to know that when we have people stand beside us, we can be overcomers. It's encouraging to know when somebody comes alongside of us and says, hey, I see you struggling. Can I help you? Wouldn't it be great to know if somebody was struggling with pride, that somebody come alongside them to lift them up? Many times I've had to fight this own fight of faith. My personal my personal. Walk with God is, is a fight that consumes um, many things. Being a pastor is not easy. If you've ever been in that role or that position, you know. And there are many temptations that come. And one of the issues in my life has been pride. Pride of life. The things that I have. The look at me. I just want to remind you tonight that if that's you, at best, you're just a steward. The possessions of your life don't belong to you. They belong to him. He gave them to you in the first place. He just wants to remind you tonight that he loves you. His first place in our heart, amen, is him. Him. The things and the resources of this creation are still part of the creation. And they belong to God. Everything within the earth, within itself, because of the Father's giving it, belongs to Jesus. People come and go. Circumstances happen in life. Great gain and great loss occurs. 
But can I tell you that God still stewards them all? Everything that happens in our life is because God wills it to be. I want to encourage you tonight that God is for you in these things. You don't have to be consumed in the things that you have or the things that you don't have. When I watch young people today, I see their, their hunger, their desire, their passion for more. Why do they have that hunger, desire, and passion? Because that's what they're being preached. You're supposed to win the day for you. The reason that you go to school is so you can get a great job. Make lots of money and buy anything that you want. The problem with that is that nobody tells them is that all that stuff amounts to a hill of beans in the glimpse of eternity. Praise God for those who are preaching the gospel in schools around, the, around our America. Because our nation, amen, in this American dream, hallelujah, needs a revamping. Somebody say amen to that. It's not just about working hard and making, making a way for you and your family. The gospel was never intended for just that. Although there's nothing wrong with that. But God calls you not to covet those things. That's pride of life. Everything we have, amen, is something God has given us to steward, including our own selves, your own person, your families, your children, your grandchildren, your possessions, your home, your car, your job, and everything in between. But can I tell you the most important priority for you to be able to accomplish that mission is having Jesus Christ at the center of it all. Without Jesus at the center of it all, amen, nothing else happens. Many people have won great fortunes and lost many great fortunes. Many people have had great jobs and have lost great jobs. Many people have had dreams and aspirations, and those dreams and aspirations dashed because all they sought out were the things that would provide a way for themselves. Can I encourage you tonight that God wants more for your life than that? I was just in a marriage counseling session this afternoon and able to share some wisdom with a young couple about marriage. And so a marriage, a marriage ceremony is one that emulates the coming, amen, of the bride of Christ and the presence and the glory of God. Somebody say thank you for that marriage ceremony. And I believe in marriage. How about you tonight? You know, the world doesn't believe in it anymore. The world's given up on marriage. Why? Because Satan has tempted them away from the truths of the gospel. Everything, anything in the image of God, the enemy hates. But I believe in couples, young couples, amen, finding their way to the gospel, finding their way to truth, finding their way, to, amen, to an altar to be married in front of their peers, hallelujah, and testifying of the goodness of God as two become one flesh. A miracle of miracles taking place testifying of what we are one day with Jesus. But pride keeps people from that. Young couples just want to live together. Young couples just want to do their thing, do their own thing. Why? Because they're afraid. Why? Because pride has come into the middle of a heart. It's haughtiness of heart. It's conceit. It's insolence. It's those things that we hang on to, even in the body of Christ, and churches that so readily accept that as okay. Can I tell you that it's not okay? Can I tell you that that's not okay? Can I tell you that God has a better way for you, amen, that if you're with someone, that you need to be married to that someone before you lay down in a bed with them? Can I tell you that God has a better way for you, amen, and if you're watching by Facebook, God has a plan for your life, amen, that leads you past insolence and pride he has a plan that will help you but you must choose that plan for yourself you must teach your children that plan you must teach your grandchildren that plan amen if we're not doing those jobs then we are failing our families we're failing the very thing god has given us because of our own pride mm, and the crowd goes wild You know, Palestine, Texas has a problem, and pride is at the very center of it, just as it was with Moab. The Moabites were formed from the lineage of Lot, who had escaped the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. God has spared this man's life. As many people in this room today, God has spared your life too. But Lot and his daughters had committed something. They had committed incest to birth this group of people. The nature and, and destruction stem from these prideful acts of sexual immorality. Our nation of America is in trouble 
due to its very similar nature. We're slowly destroying ourselves by our lacks toward sex and its place in marriage. God, forgive us, for we have sinned. God, forgive us, for we have not preached your truth. God, forgive us because we have not been doers of your word in this great nation of America. I truly do pray for America. And I pray for change here. But God is going to bring correction before the great revival that we've been hearing about comes. We have to change our way, starting with us. Amen. The one. Right here. Our hearts. Amen. Even pastors. Amen. Especially pastors. Leadership in churches. Those who call themselves by title something in the body of Christ. Amen. Can I tell you that all you have as far as a title, amen, is at best an under-shepherd in Christ. At best. That's all that we are. We are God's errand people, boys and girls, amen, to go do his will at his bidding. Amen for that. If you think that you're more than that, you are walking in pride. If you think somebody owes you something in ministry, in the gospel, you're walking in pride. (laughs) Everything that you need, amen, was bought by a heavy price by Christ Jesus' life upon a cross. Everything that you could ever want, need, or desire, amen, was given to you because Jesus said, it is finished, amen. He told his disciples, take nothing with you. Take not that tunic, nor that money purse, nor that staff, but go into the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that your life may be changed and impacted by faith itself in something that's greater than you. God wants us to know how to walk by faith, and church, you need to be saying amen to that. Because it's by faith, amen, that the next great revival is going to happen. It's going to be by faith that men in Christ take their true place, ridding themselves of pride and arrogance and conceit. It's the true nature of Christ that we would lay down our lives at these altars that lay barren in churches around this world, that Christ would forgive us of our sin nature and fill us with his Holy Spirit, amen, for his good deeds and his good work to his glory in Jesus' name. God wants us back again. Hallelujah. He wants us walking in faith. Not in our selfishness. Not in our weariness. Not in our worry. Not in our doubt and fear and unbelief. Pride will hold you bound to these very things. That will keep you from the call of your life. And the sacrifice. Amen. To go and do the things God has called you to do. You must rid yourself of pride and arrogance. And repent that God would forgive you. Lot, amen, had to find a place past this act of incest and sexual immorality with his daughters and ask for forgiveness. This very nation of America will have to fall to its knees, amen, that I can encourage you one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah for those who do that before that very hour at a place, amen, of sacrifice and surrender. Hallelujah for those men and women in churches around this world that will surrender their lives in fullness to Christ Jesus before the trump sounds. Hallelujah for those that will preach the true gospel wherever they may go, wherever you may go. Church, it's time to get past yourself and pick up your cross and follow Jesus Christ once again into all the world and preach the good news of Jesus. Hmm. The church's greatest downfall, listen to me closely tonight, please. The greatest downfall of the church is the belief that it can save itself by the ways of the world. Too many Christians, too many Christians that I know personally, will turn to the ways of the world before they'll turn to Jesus. That is your pride. That is holding you to that. That is your arrogance to believe that something's greater than God. Now, am I saying that some of the ways of the world are bad? No. God gave us the world. He gave us these things that are in the world. But can I tell you that Jesus must come first? He must be your first response. Amen. God wants us to be a part of something that's special. And I believe that it's going to manifest in a way that will bring glory to Him. I want to spend some time tonight at the altar in repentance. That's been on my heart all 
week. Yeah, I've been driving. I've been seeing some, uh, some amazing things. But God has been telling me, repent. Repent. And teach your people how to repent. If you won't repent before them, how will they know? Parents, if you don't repent before your children, how will they know? Grandparents? The like? God is calling us back to a place of repentance in this nation. I just want to spend some time tonight doing that and crying out for this nation that it would come back to a place of knowing Jesus as its Lord and Savior. That no idol would come before God. So join with me, please. And as you're led, would you just come to the altars of grace and let God speak to you about where you're at with your own selves, your own nature, and cry out for this nation that desperately needs a return to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, we have fallen short. We have come up short, God. I ask that God tonight, you would pour a spirit of conviction out upon us, your people. Lord, in this simple message tonight, I thank you, Father, that we would not be as Moab, that we, Father God, would not be a rebellious people with small false idols before you. God, I pray it now in the name of Jesus that our hope does not rest in the world. Our hope rests in Christ and Christ alone. Tonight, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would open our eyes to things unseen. That, Father God, in our own lives, in our own nature, that, Lord, if we have pride and pride of life keeping us from things in you, that, Father God, you would forgive us. In fact, say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of pride and pride of life, the things that I have kept in my heart that are not of you. I ask you, Lord, to come and forgive me. I repent of my pride. I repent of my sin nature. I ask you, to Father God, to come and restore me. Heal me, Father, from the inside out. Heal me, God. If you're watching right now by Facebook, I pray you prayed that prayer. I pray that the Holy Spirit is about you right now as it's in this very place. And I pray that you are hearing the voice of truth for yourself and your life. Oh, Abba, Father, we ask you to come. Oh, Lord, we ask you to come. Forgive us of our sin nature, Jesus. Forgive us, Father God, where we have failed you. Lord, we repent before you. We repent before you, Jesus. We repent before you, Jesus. We repent before you, Father. Lord, I pray for this nation of America. Yes, God. Oh, God, where we have come to a place of not trusting and believing you, God, forgive us. Oh, God, forgive us for not trusting not believing in you, for letting our pride come between you and I, our very call of life. I pray for this nation of America now, Father God, that you would Father, speak to the people, speak to leadership and churches. God, we pray, Lord Jesus, for repentant hearts across this land, repentant hearts across this nation, God. Where churches have gone by the wayside, Father God, to do things and allow things that should not be. I pray, Lord Jesus, for this nation of America. 
Lord, that you would have mercy. God, that you would have mercy upon us. Have mercy, God, for the wickedness of this land. Have mercy, God, for the false idols. Have mercy, God, for the, the immoralities. Have mercy, God, upon us. Have mercy. Have mercy upon our city of Palestine. Have mercy, God. Have mercy. All for the sake of your people, Lord, that trust you, that love you. Have mercy, Jesus. We repent tonight, God. We repent before you, Father. We repent before you. Who are we but yours, God? Who are we but your servant? Who are we, Jesus, but yours? Who are we, Father God? Who are we? For our lives are but just a breath, just a vapor, Lord. I ask you, Father God, to remind us tonight who we are and whose we are. In Jesus' name, we cry out for this America. We cry out, Father God, for the cities around this nation. We cry out, Lord Jesus, in repentance. Oh God, forgive us. We have fallen short. We have come short of your will. Help us, Lord God, to return to you. Help us, Lord Jesus, to return to you, Father. That the weapons of the enemy would not prosper against us. Forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us, Jesus. Oh, just say it with me. Forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh God. For the things that we have done. Teach us a better way. Teach us a better way. Teach us a better way, Lord. Teach us a better way, Lord Jesus. Teach us a better way, Father God. Fill the altars with people. Fill the altars with repentant people. Pour your spirit out, Father God, as fresh oil upon these altars. Oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> Pour your spirit out, Father God, as fresh oil. Lord, it was never, Father God, about us. All about you. For you, for your glory. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you for the honor, the privilege, Lord, to serve you. And the honor, the privilege, God, to be yours. Be yours, Jesus. Be in Christ. Lord, as I drove across this, this nation, God, every state, every city, every stop, God, those prayers that we prayed, those people that we spoke to, I pray, Lord Jesus, that they would know you more. <laughs> that they would know you more, God. Yes, God. I pray for that waitress in Covington, Georgia, God, that she would know you more. for that, that shop owner in Charleston, South Carolina, God, that she would know you. Thank you, Jesus, that we would know you more here. Jesus. 
Jesus. For every soul that comes back. For every soul that comes to know the Lord. I pray, Father God, heaven rejoice greatly. Greatly in this city. Thank you for fresh opportunity, God, to share the gospel. Oh, God, do new things. Do new things, Lord Jesus. Do new things, God. Do new things. In this dry and weary land, God, do new things, I pray. Open new doors of opportunity to, to minister, to bring hope. Thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Be my servant. God, I pray for those that staff work here, the cashier that works here, in Marion, Mississippi, God. And those that were standing in line that day, Father God, that heard the gospel. I pray that you help that city, God. That he would change his name from murder Marion, Father God. To being married to Christ. Being married to Jesus. That you'd pour your spirit out in that city. Pour your spirit out in that state. In Jesus' name. Oh, come to Palestine, Lord, and visit us. <laughs> oh, visit us here, Father. Visit us here, God. Oh, visit us here, God. He basaya rabai kia maso hi erasi anana brara si ara Yesu atara mi ara so brabai sa karabar rabai ni asatana. Oh, visit us here, God. Teach us how to repent before others. Teach us how to do that well. Lord, let us be as David with a heart after the Father. We know we're not in perfection, God. But Lord, we can, we can repent for your presence and righteousness. So teach us, God, to do that well. When we meet, make mistakes, God, teach us to do with hurriedness. Be in hurriedness to repent. Let us not be found lacking, Lord Jesus, in repentance. For the glory of the Father. For the glory of the King the glory of the King. All for the call of Jesus. The Lord has been giving visions and dreams to you, says the Spirit. Visions and dreams of great repentance in the land. He's been showing you this, these visions and dreams. The Holy Spirit wants to confirm with you tonight that it will come to pass. Your eyes and your ears will hear and see these great acts of repentance in this nation. It will come to pass. It will come to pass, says the Spirit of God. He says, stay the course. Stay the course in your life. Just stay the course. Don't give up yet. Don't lose heart yet. Don't give up hope. Yes, the road is hard and long. Yes, there are things that will deter you. But stay the course, God says. The course was built for you to travel. Amen? The gospel road was meant for you to walk out your faith. And to share the good news wherever you may go. Stay the course, says the Spirit of God. That you would find faith. That you would find favor and grace. That the Holy Spirit would give you great authority wherever you may go. That He would pour His Spirit out through you as his son and as his daughter. Stay the course, says the Spirit of God. Stay the course. Stay the course, church. Don't give up yet. Don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Stay the course in Jesus' name. Yes, God knows it's hard. He knows the road is hard at times. But stay the course. For those who stay the course will find joy in the strength of the Lord. You'll find joy in the strength of the Lord. Stay the course in Jesus' name. Amen. And he'll renew your strength. 
Stay the course, he says. I'll renew your strength. I'll overflow in you. I'll be a blessing through you to many in the name of the Lord. Stay the course, says the Spirit of God, that you would not be led astray by your pride. Stay the course. Don't detour because the world is shiny and bright. Stay the course, amen. And let the lesser idols take their place behind the great and almighty God. Stay the course for the goodness of God rests ahead of you. And he says the best is yet to come. The greatness of God be preached through you and the gospel going to all the nations. Hallelujah. With great fervor and vigor. Stay the course in Jesus' name. And know that God is with you. Know that God is for you. Know it. Know it in your heart. Know it in your heart and never forget. It's not about impressing people. It's about obeying Jesus. Stop comparing yourself to others. Stop losing in the comparison game and stay the course. Amen. Simply obey and watch God do the miraculous in your lives. And for that, Father, we give you glory tonight. We give you praise. Come on and start to give him praise tonight. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Worthy is the King. Worthy is the King. Come on and say it tonight. Worthy is the King. Worthy is the King. Yes, sí. Gracias, Jesús. Gracias, Padre, para todos en mi vida. Gracias, Jesús. Gracias, Espíritu Santo. Gracias. Gracias, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right on time, girl. Amen. Amen. There's a great task ahead of us. All of us has a great mission. The Spirit of God is saying, if you'll just lift your eyes and look to the horizon, you'll find me. Don't give up hope, ever. It's worth every sacrifice worth every hard thing you have to do. All for the sake of the gospel. All for one. Amen. All for Jesus. Whew. Know that tonight you're loved as well. Don't feel here feeling unloved. You are loved in this place. And the Spirit of God is here to remind you. loves you. He truly does. You're his child. And there our hope rests. Amen. Amen. <sighs> that we could share this with others. <laughs> I love church. I love the aspect of Christ in church. I love your heart for Christ. I love you as my brother and my sister. Give my life for you. Amen. I pray that you go well with the Lord tonight. That in all that you do, the favor of God goes with you. And that Jesus, amen, speak to you. That he gives you, that he gives you words. He's going to give you words this week, Pastor Clark. To prophesy. To share. To love people. We don't worship the gifts, amen. We worship the giver. And so we prophesy because of the giver. We pray in tongues and interpret because of the one who gave those things. We heal, amen, because of the Spirit of God that allows us to heal. 
And this, this week I see that happening. The Spirit of God coming upon you, all of you, all of you, richly. Not by mistake that you heard this tonight, but God would pour out His self on you this week. He wants to move in power through you. I pray that you would find yourself humbled. Because pride will quench the Spirit of God. Humble yourselves before the Father. Amen. And His Spirit will come upon you and do the miraculous. Some of you have been asking, where are miracles in church? Where are they at? Can I tell you that they're here? But you have to be humble to see it. You have to be humble to know it. We have no power except the power He gives us. Humble yourselves this week. Don't be led by pride. And you'll see miracles, signs and wonders as you preach the good news of Jesus. Amen. God be with you. We love you. God bless you for watching my Facebook tonight. Have a blessed week.